I'm now joined by Kenna Malik, the journalist and broadcaster. Hi. And the reason being, I'm here with you, Kenna, is because in just two days' time, a very special festival is about to start. In fact, it's the first one of its kind, one that's dedicated entirely to South Asian writing. There are plenty of events throughout the week and uh, half that it's on, including a talk by said author who is uh, sitting right in front of me. Uh, Kenna, good afternoon Hi, and welcome uh, to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here. And um, the book I'm interested to talk about, From Fatwa to Jihad, The Culture of Offence in Britain, which is, I presume, what you're going to be talking about at uh, the festival. Tell me about this book. Well, the book takes the, the Rushdie affair mm. uh, and the book burning. Back the in satanic verses. Oh, the satanic verses yes. back in 1989. Now, the fatwa. Um, the Ayatollah Khomeini's fatwa. When, it as when Islamic fundamentalism wasn't a term that really anybody understood. Precisely, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly the point. The point is that uh, it takes it as a starting point to look at how Britain's changed and the world has changed in the, in, in the 20 years since then. And a lot of, it's a watershed, the Rushdie affair in many ways, because a lot of the themes that now dominate politics, such as um, Islam, Islamism, terrorism, free speech, uh, the giving of offence, multiculturalism, all those issues first really came to the surface in the debate around the satanic verses and the Rushdie affair. So what I do is, is, is look at that um, and look at how Britain and the world has changed um, in, in those 20 years and in many ways changed for the worse. Would well, you think that if Salman Rushdie had released this, that book now the reaction would have been different. Would it have been worse, or would it have been the same, or would it have been less of a reaction? It's interesting that I asked Hanif Qureshi, who's a, he's a very good friend of, 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 of Salman's, um, that, very, that very question. I said, do you think that the Satanic Verses could have been published today? Mm. And he said, it not only could not have been published, but it could not be written today. And there's so much has changed in the past 20 years that I think we're frightened. Not frightened of terrorism, but it's just frightened of giving offence and of tackling those, some of those really difficult questions. But the flip side of that is that the reason it couldn't be written today is because a man would not be naive enough to think that he can write a book like that in which someone who is held very dearly to Muslims is satirised in that way. And that is well, progress, is it not, in the sense that people understand that with freedom of speech comes responsibility. No, I think it's, it's regress. I don't see in the slightest why we should not satirise uh, Muhammad any more than we should not satirise uh, Jesus or we should not satirise Lenin who, let's not forget, lots of people hold very dearly. Um, the point is that... It's if we live... Lenin and Mohammed oh, to I'm, the I'm, hearts I'm, of people. I'm, I'm not saying... Communists that I'm, I'm... do not hold Lenin in the same way, do they, as, the, as Muslims would hold the Prophet Muhammad? Prophet oh. Muhammad is regarded to Muslims as being someone that is more dearer to them than their own mothers and fathers. I don't think many communists would regard Lenin as being such. Many communists went to Possibly. their death. Um, professing their faith to communism, the show trials Not to the, Lenin, the show trials uh, to Lenin, to Trotsky, to, uh, the show trials in the nineteen thirties. Right, many different people, yes. Um, the, the, but the point I'm making is that people are deeply attached to all sorts of beliefs and faiths. Yes, but you have to. And that, you, you, you and have that, to hold on, hold it's on, more hold sophisticated on. than that, isn't it? Why? Because you cannot compare the love someone may have for Trotsky to the love that someone has to Mohammed. We've seen that people, uh, we've, 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 we've heard from people, we've seen from people just how clearly they feel about the Prophet Mohammed. Now, in this day and age, we didn't understand why people were burning books decades ago when Satanic Verses. Now we do, perhaps, have a clearer understanding, and that's why a book like that wouldn't be written, and that's because now we understand the sensitivities that people have, and we respect those sensitivities, and we don't wish to trample all over them for the sake of art. I don't see why not. The point is that we well, live in a, we live in a look. If we lived in a homogenous society where everybody thought the same, then the giving of offence could only be gratuitous, precisely because everybody thinks the same. But precisely because we live in a multicultural society where there are deeply held views and often views that clash with each other, it's both important, um, I inevitable and important, I think, to give offence. It's inevitable because if you live in such a society, views will always clash. And it's much better. Offence for offence's sake. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait till I've finished. 
uh, he, uh, you, you were talking minutes ago of being uh, uh, sophisticated and nuanced. Let, let, let me finish my argument. Um, it, it's inevitable because, uh, you know, where you live in such a society where there are deeply held views which clash with each other, it's far better to have those clashes in the open than to suppress them in the name of respect or of tolerance. But it's also important, it seems to me, because the, if we want to change society, if we want social progress, that always requires offending some group or other. Imagine, go, go back to the birth of Islam. What, what was where, the, where was on, the progress in Satanic Verses? What's the progress in where, where was the progress in the publication of Satanic Verses? It wasn't, certainly wasn't a progress for Salman Rushdie and his life, was it? No, Was but, it a progress it was for a, art it, and literature? It was, an Im it was a very important uh, uh, argument that, that Rushdie was what making. What was the progress? It, the, 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 it, back in the 80s, you, you may not remember, back in the 80s, the, uh, there was a very strong secular movement within Asian communities, within Muslim communities. Rushdie spoke for that secular movement, a progressive secular movement that criticised uh, uh, religion, that, that defended equal rights, that defended uh, 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 women's rights, that criticised attack racism. There are plenty of Muslims, as you well know, Kenan, who go around espousing human rights, uh, civil society, equal rights, who do not do it while satirising Muhammad, nor would ever dream of doing so. So where's the progress, going back to your orig my I original do not see that. I do not see in the slightest what's the problem in satirising Muhammad, just as I do not see the problem in the slightest what the, but is the that, problem... But is that in, your in fundamental misunderstanding of how people regard the Prophet Muhammad in their religion, though? People, no, be, be, people regard him in, 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 a way, in all sorts of ways, actually. Some people regard him as uh, a, a, a deeply, deeply important, as somebody who should not be satirised. Others do not regard him in that fashion. There's a, there's a story that there's a Danish MP called Nasser Hadda, a Muslim MP, who tells a story. He says um, uh, he supported the publication of, this, of um, uh, the Danish cartoons. He said um, uh, he didn't agree with them, but the, the newspapers had a right to publish. And there was, this, there was a, an editor of, of a left-wing newspaper, the, 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 the main newspaper in, in Denmark. Uh, and he said to NASA, he said, um, most people in, in all, all Muslims in Denmark uh, oppose the publication of the um, the cartoons and NASA said, "No, they don't. I don't. Lots of people like me don't." And and the the the, the um, uh, editor says, "Well, that's because you're not a proper Muslim." In other words, there's this perception of what proper Muslims should believe in. They should be offended by the satanic verses. They should believe that the uh, uh, Danish cartoons should not be published. In fact, if you look at the history of the satanic verses. When it was published, most people simply did not, most Muslims simply did not care about it. It was freely available. It was freely available in Iran, for that matter. It didn't care or, or, or just didn't know and didn't read it. When, that's, that's, when, different. that's uh, different. That, that is different. But when, when Saudi Arabia, in 1989, tried to get a worldwide ban on, in Muslim countries on the satanic verses, the only countries that responded were countries with large subcontinental populations. Um, places like South Africa, for instance, or, or Malaysia. Uh, most Arab countries didn't uh, respond. Iran didn't respond. Turkey didn't respond. Um, Muslim communities well, in, in, Iran in Germany... Iran caught up eventually, didn't they? It did, but it did not, not because, it, for, for theological or, or reasons of religion, for political reasons. Uh, because the, uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini was on the defensive. Yeah, he, but they, he just they lost, certainly he just... based it on theological reasons. Oh, uh, absolutely, yes, yeah. but that's, a, that's an entirely different matter. You still haven't seen to argue why it's progress. Because free speech, the, the basis of any kind of change is our ability to talk freely, to have this kind of conversation, to be able to talk freely. But unfettered? Unfettered. So you have the right to offend whoever you want, whenever you want? In, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
the the, op the opposite to that is uh, the op the opposite of that is is I have the right to tell other people that they there are there are limits to what they can say or do that there are certain things they can't say because it is offensive. If I find criticisms of but can't you uh, just be smart enough? Can't you just dig enough? Can't you just be sensitive enough? to understand that that will offend someone, therefore don't do it. Otherwise, as we have a law now, incitement to racial hatred, you are committing that sin, are you not? Uh, but I do not understand what is wrong with offending people. What's wrong with it? Well, in the definition of the word offence, yeah. people will be offended by it. Now, I'm not saying, look, if I, look, someone will probably find the t-shirt and trainers I'm wearing today offensive mm -hmm. but that's not the same as me saying something uh, derogatory about uh, Ganesh Ji or, um, or, or Sri Guru Nanak or um, Prophet Muhammad. That's why, why are, there are gradations why, why, of offence. But why, why is it right to offend say political beliefs on political leaders but not religious beliefs and religious leaders? Why, why should we make that separation, that distinction? Well, that depends on, on how much you believe in that system, because a lot of people believe that religious belief is sacrosanct, whereas politicians themselves, by very virtue of who and what they are, constantly undermine themselves by being hypocrites. But it's precisely by saying that certain beliefs, religious beliefs, are sacrosanct, that those beliefs are protected, and therefore you cannot challenge them, and therefore that's how those people in power keep their power by saying what we are, what we believe, what we hold, what we say, whether about women, about gays, about whoever, is sacrosanct, cannot be challenged. It is offensive to challenge this. And that is precisely why it's important to challenge it. Because as I said, without just challenging those kinds of opinion, without giving offence to some group or other. You cannot have progress. If you want progress in, say, uh, 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 equal rights, whether it's for women, for gays, for, 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 for Muslims, for that matter, but did, but, you, you but, have to challenge but did, and offend yeah. people who, who do not wish to give equal rights to those groups. But did Salman Rushdie attempt to consult with Islamic scholars before writing Satanic Verses? Uh, why should he? Well, because if he is going to set out on a course which he feels might offend people, surely it's important in learned debate, and he is an academic and an intellectual, that you see both sides of the story before you embark on a journey with potentially disastrous results, which is potentially uh, what happened to Salman Rushdie. So every time somebody writes a novel about some issue, he has to go well, around. It's not some issue, is it, Kenan? Don't be naive. You know I, it's I'm not, not being some. Naive. You know it's Look, not some issue. It's about the Prophet Muhammad. Indeed, and in the 1980s, within Muslim communities in Britain, there was a big debate. Some, the more conservative sections of Muslim communities in in, in Britain, held that uh, that one should not give offence to uh, uh, to the Prophet. Others. People like me, people like Salman Rushdie. There was a whole people like uh, Would you members of the Asia a proper Muslim. No. Right. <laughs> um, there, so there, there, so there, it's fine for you then to satirise the Prophet then, because you don't regard yourself as a, as a proper Muslim. Therefore you're not taking into account the feelings of others anyway, because you presumably don't care about them. So is, 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 it, wrong to, is, is it wrong then, is, is it right for me to say you must not um, uh, offend or criticise or satirise secular society because I'm a believer in secular society? Well where is, wh what are the symbolic uh, totem poles, as it were, of secular society. What do you? Where, where is there? Where is the icon in secular society that you believe in? Who is okay, your hero? Okay. Who is the person who provides your guidance in secular society? I, I don't need. I don't need this. Right. Well, some people do need a religious. Yeah, uh, well, precisely. Right. But, but the, the fact that some people uh, need you have that. Right to offend the, them. The, the fact that some people need that and others peop other people don't doesn't mean that just because they need that, that should not be offended. What you're suggesting is that, um, is that uh, irrational beliefs should be protected, whereas rational beliefs should not be protected. I don't see no, this... No, I'm, I'm suggesting that in a rational world, before offending someone, perhaps it may be worth, when it's as sensitive as religion, checking on whether, how, or, how, or gauging how offensive that's going to be. But and I think he, that's hold rational, hold on, isn't who, it? No, who you brought would he, that who word would, into the sentence. Who, 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 who would he check with? Those who think that it is okay to offend uh, and satirise well, Muhammad? He clearly, or those, hold on, hold on. Who would, who, you tell me, he who, makes that, who, makes that, who makes that decision? Those who think that it is okay 
to satirise Mohammed are those who think that it's just not okay. Who makes that decision? He had no idea, did he, the backlash that that book would have created. I have no idea right, whether okay. he had or not. Or maybe we can ask but, uh, Hanif next time we see him. Okay, listen, we'll come back to this in a minute. I